Hello and welcome to another of my moustache musings. Um, I started my walk a little earlier today because I just had my dinner and I started to feel lazy. You know, like, once you're lazy, you just don't want to come out and walk already. So I thought I better come out and get this walk over and done with. If not, there'll be no exercise for today. Today I want to talk about um, writing and uh, making money as a writer. <clears throat> uh, some of you might know I've already been a very lucky author. I've published four books and one of them, believe it or not, is a comic book. Who would have thought that I can uh, actually publish a comic book? Well, certainly not me. But I uh, consider myself very lucky. Lah. So I have been in the writing industry, would you say? <coughs> for, excuse me, <coughs> for I think more than 15 years. Isn't it? Yeah. Or maybe more than 10 years. Lah. Let's, let's not. Um, I, I, I don't know, maybe 15 years, I think 15 years might be, might be, uh, might be the correct time, length of time. And uh, I've only published four books. Uh, yeah, granted, I'm not a very uh, prolific writer like, like my uncle, Dr. Ong Hien Tat. He, he can finish writing an entire book in two months. It's, uh, it's quite good. Anyway, if you are a uh, aspire to be a writer, <laughs> or you like to know more about writing for a living, uh, then I'm gonna rattle off some advice for you. Okay, the first thing you need to know that, and this is for ninety nine point. 99% of writers out there, you cannot make a living from writing. I know you have heard of J.K. Rowling and Stephen King and uh, this, all these uh, Pulitzer Prize winners, but really, if you look at the number of writers there are uh, versus the actual hey boy tied up ah oh, tied up tonight boy versus the number of uh, writers really the ones who make big bucks uh, are very few <clears throat> so for the vast majority of us writing is more or less like a hobby Writing is something that can earn you a bit of money on the side. Uh, you probably would need a part-time job if you are thinking of pursuing um, a, write, a career in writing. <clears throat> Unless you get a job in a magazine or in a newspaper, it's going to be tough getting a career in writing. But don't let that stop you, because that's what writers do. Writers write. If you're a writer and you don't write, then I'm very sorry to tell you that you're not a writer. You only wish you were a writer. You don't even qualify as one of those people who aspire to be a writer. You're just one of those who want to be. You know, we all dream of being a superstar actor and uh, appearing in a blockbuster movie, but really, how many of us can really act? <clears throat> so therefore, it's just one of those things we want to be, but we wish we could be, but we are we're not. We're not. So if, if you are a writer, let me tell you what you will probably be feeling. 
If you're a writer, you're probably a person who sees words and get excited with words, especially new words, especially interesting words. And immediately, you will want to try and string sentences using that new word. If you have this kind of uh, feeling, then congratulations, you're a writer. If you prefer to write than to talk, then you're probably a writer. Writing is different from talking, like what I'm doing now. This is difficult for me. Thinking. Talking like this, off the cuff, is really difficult for me. Uh, you uh, have to think on your feet. And you have to think of pronunciations. You have to think of the right words to use. So, it's not easy. I much prefer writing, where you can take a time to construct clever sentences, to convey what you're thinking, to express what you want to express. That, that I think is, is me. Yeah, so I'm, I would consider myself a writer. I don't enjoy this talking thing, but, ah uh, well, you know, it's always good to try something new. So, here we are. Okay, I want to talk about how do you get yourself published. A lot of writers write. And then, uh, they dream of signing up with a big publishing company. I've got bad news for you. The bad news is lots of Publishing companies have closed. You can see, uh, even in Malaysia itself, Blue Ink is gone since last year. Uh, Utusan uh, is gone. Um, Malay Mail has stopped their print newspaper. They've, they've now only gone to online, all in the effort of cutting costs. People don't uh, buy physical books anymore and uh, you have a big challenge um, with things like YouTube, Netflix. So you, this is an uphill battle and I think that books are losing out, they are losing this battle. I really don't know what the future is, uh, even the magazine that I work for, we they have been struggling with this for many, many years. Uh, the writing has been on the wall for a long time, but the publisher has been cutting costs, uh, really cutting costs. So writers are getting are underpaid, but we explain to the writers uh, that if you accept uh, you accept the pay, then write lah. If you don't accept it, then you don't write lah. Kind of sad. I, 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 I know that the publishers are honest people. They're not, um, how do you say, it? taking advantage of the market and uh, doing these underhanded things. They, yeah, they're really just struggling because People don't read anymore. Most people, if they don't have Netflix, they just turn on YouTube and just just watch YouTube. Lah. It's kind of sad. Lah. But not too. Yeah, so how do you get yourself uh, published? It's really difficult. But if you're a writer, if you're a true writer, you, you won't stop. You won't stop looking for publishers. You would try and you can try several uh, ways. One is to write to publishers and try and submit your um, your writing, your work to them, and see if um, they'll accept it. Then you can uh, talk your 
talk about your rates or royalty or whatever. But that out of maybe a hundred or emails that you write, you probably get a handful of replies only and usually the replies are in the negative. So I hope, I, I, I know that a lot of people will be discouraged, but if you're a writer, well, you just continue writing. You just get down and start your next novel or your next book. This is what writers do. Writers write because there's something inside them that just wants to be expressed in words. There's something inside them that's just waiting to be birthed, to be waiting to be exploded out of their out of their brain, out of their soul and into paper or the computer or whatever. Because this is this is what is a writer a writer is essentially. So you just gotta write. I always encourage writers to start their own blog and to write. Write as often as you can. Good evening. Write as much as you can. And uh, there are no rules to writing. Some people, hey boy. Some people will write every day and some people will write once a week. It doesn't matter lah, as long as you do write. It's when you stop writing, then you stop being a writer. Now if you don't write, you want to be a writer and you find that you just can't seem to get the knack of writing, no? uh, don't be discouraged, don't be sad because not everybody is cut out to be a writer. Case in point would be the our Malaysian Writers Society Facebook group. We've got 5,000 people who've joined the Facebook group, but only a hundred plus, or maybe two hundred over people have actually joined the Persatuan as a annual fee-paying, card-carrying member. And when the, when we call for submissions, uh, only a handful of people actually took up the challenge to submit. And this, I'm talking about new writers, writers who have a new name, who need a break in writing, who has never been published before, much less um, have a book with their name printed on it. And uh, we were kind of surprised. So the first book that we published under the society was really such a thin book. It was uh, <laughs> quite sad, but what to do? Just, just the way it is, lah. Never mind. Lah. At least the society tried. So, my point is, lots of people want to be a writer. Lots of people would like to stand, uh, would like to imagine themselves receiving the Pulitzer and all these other other prizes, but. In actual fact, uh, lots of them don't really want to do anything. Evening, hot day. I know. I know what you're doing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I can't say that it's wrong la, to dream of being a writer, but if you really uh, want to know whether you're a writer or not, just look at how much you write lah. Um, thinking of writing is not a. It's not. Um, it doesn't cut it. Cut you as a writer. 
uh, some of you who might have uh, scored A's in your writing in school. Um, you might have done really well in your essays and whatnot. But write, writing for money is totally different. Yeah, anyway, to get back to my point about starting a blog, I would really suggest that you, if you're a writer, you should start a blog and, and, and write. Now, what if you start a blog and after a year or two, you kind of like don't have any more inspiration to write? There's nothing else to write. Then you just stop. Uh, you too again. Is it eaten or not? Huh? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, just stop and uh, that's, that's okay. Right, I want to cover where do you find inspiration? Where do you find ideas? You can find inspiration and ideas everywhere and anywhere. If you're a uh, a man on a mission, you will find a way to get hold of ideas. For me, when I'm uh, working on a book, I carry a notebook and I'm talking about a physical notebook and in the no notebook I have a pen which I put in uh, with the notebook and I never ever separate the two. It's it's in my pouch so that if I ever have a, an idea I will just take out the notebook and write the idea down just jot it down as a note and then we can go back and expand on I mean I don't I don't write paragraphs in the in the notebook and uh, this is something I strongly recommend you this is one of the secrets of a good writer we don't write things into our phone, into our tablet because it just doesn't work. I've, I myself have tried it. If, if uh, let's say I, I didn't bring that notebook out and I really needed to jot down an idea, then, then yes, I would, um, I would um, jot it into my phone. But everything else goes into um, a, a physical notebook this um, you don't have to write notes in uh, long notes sometimes I can tell you that sometimes we get ideas and um, we just don't know the words to use so sometimes we just draw stick figures and um, sometimes we we want to describe a place a house or a bar or a cafe and we can't quite imagine it in our minds yet but some details um, come in our minds we conjure up in our imagination and um, sometimes you just can't find the words for it so what we do is uh, we just draw little bits and pieces uh, as best as we can and um, later it's just it, it's just to serve as a reminder that oh yeah that's right this bar had a has a very strange painting in the in the corner and uh, um, and you know you draw the frame because you wanted to describe the frame in your in your story in your book so you just kind of draw it just 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 to remind you that yeah there's something that I wanted to talk about about the frame or something like that and that's what that's the power of a notebook over your phone you it's very difficult to draw on your phone and um, in the, in a physical notebook you can turn the notebook uh, this way and this way and write little notes and little words that you want to use um, I think it's, it's um, this is one of those secrets that uh, writers have that lots of people don't know. <clears throat> right.
right maybe i'd like to, to tell you about uh, the rates that a writer should be getting the normal rate for a writer is eight percent it doesn't matter whether you're new writer or an experienced writer it is normally eight percent so if your book sells for 10 ringgit you should get 80 cents from the 10 ringgit if, if they sell one book okay so for every book that they sell you should get 80 cents uh, but you can also do deals with your publisher so uh, maybe the publisher uh, might have a deal whereby you will be paid a lump sum and um, for an X number of uh, copies. So if you agree to the deal, then go ahead and sign the agreement. If you don't agree, then don't sign the agreement. I, I heard that right, authors like Lillian Tu, they uh, would ask for 14%. That's uh, so out for a 10 ringgit book that they sell. 10 ringgit is in the recommended retail price. Uh, then they will get 1 ringgit and 40 cents. Uh. Mm. But um, it's uh, not so straightforward, okay? So maybe the publisher will say we are uh, printing 2,000 copies of your book. But if you only end up selling 100 copies of your book, you will only end up getting royalty for uh, 100 copies. That's it. Because it's, the royalty is based on the number of books that are sold, not uh, the number of books that were printed. Of course, if, um, if the publisher prints 2,000 copies, then the publisher is quite confident that he can sell 2,000 copies or maybe more than 1,000 copies. Huh? So, uh, try and work closely with your publisher. Your publisher should be a good friend to you. Try and, make, try and be friends with your publisher. Um, because the publisher can help you <clears throat> try and talk to your publisher about marketing your book um, and see how you as a writer can help to market the book for me I have been to quite a number of popular bookstore events uh, here and there at one time uh, I was supposed to travel uh, outstation as well to popular bookshops in Penang, Johor and whatnot but um, I didn't get a chance to do that so I only basically uh, only promoted my books in person uh, in popular bookstores in the Klang Valley <clears throat> so yeah for me I, I don't really care uh, what I have to do in order to promote my book because ultimately it's it's my book Right, I would like to now talk about uh, Scam publishers Some people call them vanity publishers but in my opinion these are really, um, it falls in, in, my, in my opinion, it falls into the category of scamming people. So, I first heard about this when a, a person came up to me and um, asked me if I could introduce my publisher to him. And then I asked him if he... If he um, if, 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 he, if he was a writer and what book 
he was writing because you know different publishers publish different kinds of uh, genre and uh, books so you don't go to <coughs> let's say Pelangi and, and uh, Ilmu Bhakti and say oh I've got a I've got a novel and I want to publish it well they are not into these kinds of publishing so they'll probably reject you uh. so it's a kind of like a waste of time uh, to go to them so uh, so I wanted to know uh, what kind of book he had written and he said oh no no it's not uh, I, I didn't write the book but my dad wrote a book <clears throat> and he said that the dad his dad had submitted um, the book for publishing like two years ago or something like that and and he said that the, his dad paid money to the publisher and I was thinking wait what no you don't you don't pay the publisher the publisher prints the book uh, on their own they, the, the, the money comes out from the publisher not from you and then when they sell uh, for every copy that is sold um, you get your royalty as per your agreement uh. And he said, no, no, this one is, um, <clears throat> my dad had paid, in fact, actually, it wasn't his dad who paid, it was him. He paid uh, as a gift to his dad, and uh, this is how it works. So there are publishers who would approach you as a writer, and then they'll offer their services to publish your book. But you have to pay for the printing. So... They got they have got different packages lah. So maybe one package would be to print uh, a thousand copies of your book, and uh, they will also take care of the, uh, designing the cover, the layout, and uh, everything else lah. You just have to submit a word document or a LibreOffice document to them, and uh, they will uh, do the rest for you. Then if you pay a little bit more, maybe you get a better cover and um, maybe they will also promote it on their website and whatnot. <clears throat> uh, then you pay even more then maybe you, you can get more copies maybe they'll say okay we'll print uh, 2,000 copies for you and then give you an extra 500 copies for free um, there are all sorts of um, packages lah. but uh, their role is mainly to print the books for you only and get it ready um, to be sold but they don't actually good evening they don't actually do the selling which is weird because the publisher's job is to print and sell uh, books but this this kind of publisher <laughs> they only print your book so if you want to say that they are publishers I I would think that they are not I think they are they are more like a printer and uh, you having to pay them for the cost of the printing and whatnot and they are of course they have got their own cost lah. so you pay for all that I think uh, it's uh, not to your advantage lah. because you as a writer you don't know how how to um, sell your own books so okay let's say you print um, okay let's say you you print just a thousand copies of your book lah. so what do you do with it these guys print for you you pay them uh, it looks nice now, now, now what do you do what do you do with it you just go on your Facebook and and uh, ask your friends to buy a copy is it what do, you, what, what do you do? So, you don't know. You don't know because you, there is a whole different world out there. <laughs> yeah. Mm. I, I know it's a whole different world out there when it comes to selling and marketing of books because I actually have tried that um, before I um, called. This is this is uh, maybe 15 20 years ago yeah 20 years ago uh, is it yeah, i'm 53 yeah 20 years ago uh, um i told remember i told you about my uncle 
who's a prolific writer, so he would be writing books. And uh, he was saying he did that. Um, uh, he would like you. He said, "Why don't I try to sell his books for him?" So I thought, "Okay, I just call. I called up all the bookshops, MPH, Popular. At that time, there was uh, Brita, and and uh, a few lah. Like, Brita is gone already, um, and a few more gone. Uh, MPH and Popular are still around. But I called." I called all of them and uh, I remember when I went to um, Brita and, and Popular, I was um, shocked at how the distribution worked. The books are put on consignment, which means if they sell nothing, you earn nothing and there's no cost to them. They'll just return your books to you. Okay. <laughs> so, if you don't have the money to uh, print your own books, then you're going to be in a, in a lot of trouble. Uh, I remember there's one book store chain uh, there was a, a young lady who attended to me and I, I told him that I got these books to sell and um, she looked at my three or I think I had two or three books uh, that are written by my uncle and then uh, she wrote something on a piece of paper and then she handed it to me and it was the names of their bookshops and the location of their bookshops and next to each location there was the number two five um, two two and three and five and ten and that was those those kinds of numbers when when I asked what the numbers were they told me that was the number of copies of books that they wanted me to deliver to those outlets. <laughs> I, was, I, was, I went back and told my uncle the, the parking and the petrol is going to cost more than what you're going to be earning from those outlets if you sell all. Like if they ask for two copies and you at least sold the two copies, the money that you make <laughs> I think is less than the parking and the petrol and the time that it takes to get there. So, as you can see, it's not easy to sell um, books. You really need a publisher who has uh, rela relationships and connections to the bookshops and they know how to make deals with the bookshops. They know how to sell your books, they know how to market your books. So it's much better to just go with a publisher. So, the bottom line uh, about this particular um, way of getting published, this vanity publishing or self-publishing thing, you should only do it if you really know how to do it. And there are some people, some writers who do know how to do it. In fact, um, our uh, Malaysian Writers Society, every now and again, offers a course on how to be a self-published author and if you are really interested in self-publishing then I would suggest that you attend the course. Hi, good evening. Uh, if not, then I would suggest you go to, through the traditional way, the way uh, I do it which is to find a publisher who will take your work and uh, publish it for you. That way you have zero cost. You don't have to come up with the money for printing, for marketing, for um, basically anything. You 
if you are told to appear at a uh, book signing or a, uh, a a particular outlet to talk about your book, you just go uh, on your own expense and that's really cheap. Lah. Okay? Um, yeah. Okay, let's talk about rejection. Rejection is part and parcel of the game. Lots of authors get rejected, even I get rejected. In fact, I just proposed two books to my publisher and um, no reply. The publisher said, let me think about it. And then, even though I sent a follow-up message asking, well, have you thought about it? And the reply was something along the line, so let me get back to you. And uh, no reply. So, no reply is the Malaysian way of saying not interested. This is uh, Malaysia. We, we Asians do not like to disappoint uh, people. So, instead of saying no outright, so what we do is we just, we just uh, don't reply. Lah. So if you do, if you get a no reply, um, just means that they're not interested in your book. And if they're not interested in your book, it only means one thing: your book cannot sell. If your book can sell, everybody will want to publish it. Think about it. Okay. So just because uh, somebody rejects your book, it doesn't mean that you're a lousy author that you cannot write. It is maybe. It's the topic that you've chosen to, or the, the, the book itself, you know. Uh, for instance, uh, if you had written a book about wizards and um, magic, a boy who inherited some magic powers, and it sounds so much like, like Harry Potter, maybe the publisher would not want to publish your book because it, it, the market is flooded with those kinds of books so maybe they, are, they feel that uh, it won't sell so therefore your book might be an interesting book but it's a book at, uh, that was presented at the wrong time so um, these kinds of if you have finished writing an entire book you just keep it lah for another time, another publisher who would be interested in the, such a book. However, you you don't give up. You're a writer, so write now. Just keep writing, continue writing. Um, I find that uh, it's useful to write short stories and uh, short literary works because it helps you to construct sentences to formulate ideas to put together um, ideas I, and, and I think that you would actually lose the, the skill of writing if you don't write enough so I uh, would suggest that uh, even if you are not being published or you are waiting for inspiration for your next novel, I would suggest that you continue writing. And you know, how many authors, I'm sure you know of authors whose short works have turned in, into uh, popular reading for people. Talking about uh, readers, if you are a writer and you are a new writer, even a, uh, an old writer, a writer like me, I've got four books uh, published. I've got one more um, waiting to be published, but uh, that one has been postponed because of because of uh, COVID nineteen. So we had to postpone the book launch. I still write for 
basically one person only. That's right, I write for only one person. If that person is happy with my work, then I'm happy with my work. And that person is me. I literally enjoy reading my own works. I can read my own stories and my own books over and over again. I still find the jokes that I made in my comic book funny. I'm immensely proud of my books, my works. And uh, I tell you, if I'm not proud of my work, I wouldn't publish it. I wouldn't send it in to the uh, publisher for publishing. Uh, evening. So, when you write, try and make sure that you like what you write and not one of those, ah yeah, whatever, I'll just give Vanilla. Just submit Vanilla. That's the worst kind of writer. That's the worst kind of author who completes a deadline and uh, hands in <coughs> hands in rubbish. Let's see, do I have any more advice to give to writers? Maybe you, you like to know about um, how difficult it is to write. Uh, it really depends on, on you as a writer. Some people need to write every day. Um, the general rule is to write every day. That's a good rule to follow because um, if you don't write every day, you will become lazy. Less like everything else that you do in life, like, you know, exercising and whatnot. You, if you skip one or two days, you tend to become lazy after that, and then you know you stop doing the exercise, the exercise routine. So same with writing, lah. So it's a good rule of uh, to follow is to write daily. <clears throat> However, not everybody can write daily and it also depends on what you're writing so if there are you're writing something that needs a lot of research um, so there might be days or even weeks where you have to devote your time to researching and um, so that could be part of your writing process um, so don't feel bad about not writing you only feel bad about writing is when you you know you should be writing, but you didn't write. Then, then you should feel bad. <laughs> and I've I've seen and heard people who tell me things like, "Oh, I'm still researching my next book." When the people tell me that, I can tell that that next book is not coming. You. Want to write a book? You got to be active. You got to actively write the book. Um, I've um, uh, seen and heard of people who told me I'm still formulating and thinking of my plot. Some are genuine. It, um, for instance, uh, if you are a parent, and especially if you are a single parent, that's even worse. It's difficult uh, to find the time to devote to writing. So yeah, there'll be days, there'll be several days where you can just cannot write. So what else can you do but to think of your plots and your subplots? So you just have to uh, do that. Uh. At least it's, you know, when you're thinking of your plots and subplots, you're still thinking and uh, thinking of your book and your and your writing, but if you're using the words plots and subplots as an excuse as to why you're not writing, then you're just kidding yourself, lah. You're just bluffing your own self. <clears throat> I can tell you that 
uh, from my experience as an editor uh, for the magazine I remember that I mentioned I can tell you that I get a lot of emails and uh, messages from uh, so-called writers who want to write um, sure there'll be I'm usually very, very upfront about the low rates that the magazine pays so that so that no one uh, is under the wrong impression of anything but once the rates are agreed upon by the writer usually I let the writer uh, start writing I can tell you that out of 10 people who say that they agree to write and they want to write and they will be submitting something uh, for the magazine soon nine of them will end up not writing <laughs> I'm not kidding you <laughs> it's uh, this is from my own experience so what do you what do you want if you are a writer which one do you want to be do you want to be part of that group that talks about writing but never really writes or, or do you want to be one of us where we actually devote time to writing are you one of those people who dream of being a writer but in the end uh, you don't even get excited about writing or are you one of those people who get excited when you can string together a clever sentence when you can put together a wonderful description of a scene of a character are you one of those people who only dream of being famous for your book but in the end you start writing and you at least stop at stop at chapter 3 and then you tell people writer's block lah. stop already lah. 2 years already stop. stuck at, ch at chapter 3 or do you have that drive to go out and look for inspiration go out and talk to people and uh, look for ideas and inspiration in uh, all sorts of places which one are you so you can tell you can tell a real writer by how much he writes what he writes when he writes anyway I think I've talked enough about being a writer if you aspire to be a writer I wish you all the best you can always uh, talk to me got me a message I'll try and explain uh, the, the, you know whatever you want to know and I'll see you in the next moustache musing